Welcome to your reading, Carlos. So let's uh, go ahead and jump right in. Gotta get my clock on. Okay, here we are. And yep. All right, so let's go ahead and share the screen, show what we are dealing with today. So obviously, um, interesting chart. Um, you got that cancer rising at 28 degrees. So you have an exact, uh, you know, it's a trying with, try with my son, not that that matters or anything. But um, yeah, so late degree cancer rising. Um, oh, wow, we have the same thing, actually. It's very interesting. We both have 28 degree risings and 14 degrees. Uh, oh, never mind. I need to stop. Okay, I've said enough about myself. I have South Node, you have North Node, but. Still something. Um, so, Sun in Gemini in the 12th, um, opposite Uranus, and um, conjunct, yeah, I can know. And um, Sun. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I wouldn't do that conjunction. Second sign, lightly conjunct Chiron. Most importantly, opposite Uranus, very tight. Um, then you have a moon in Taurus, and your moon is um opposite, I guess, Jupiter. It's not really that much going on. Um. With the moon, I mean, you've avoided all the hard ass, like very, very hard moon aspects. The Jupiter one's kind of just like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, so you know, being being a Gemini Sun, and a, and a, like I said, a Taurus Moon, they're back to back signs. Taurus Moons, you know, they like things to be very secure in their life. Um, I guess I can switch back to myself now. Yeah, the, yeah, okay, there we go. And so I'm, this is the first time I've ever done chosen HD mode on my camera. I feel like it looks like noticeably better. But um, we'll see. I don't know if it like, uses like a bunch more space. I'm not really sure. But um, okay. Go back to the chart. So um, when you have, you're saying you're in a back to back sign and you have, you have a zero degree. So, okay, so this is, a very very like a uh, important part your sun is at zero degrees zero degrees is a um a critical degree you know obviously it's the first degree of, of you know it's a, like there's 30 30 degrees um any sign and it's the first here's mika saying hi so um you know and, and being in the 12th house it, it would definitely denote some level of wow why are you my cat's feet are all wet. Where were you, Miko? Were you in the shower? When she was walking in the shower. But um, you know, the fact that it's zero degrees and in the twelfth house is um that's okay here. Basically, um speaking about how it's like it's it's a very karmic, very, very karmic um you know lifetime for you right um zero degrees you know they they um i always see them as like a very like in like a very pure non-diluted version of that sign it's kind of like karmically yeah it's 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 very new so in the, in the 12th house it's kind of a similar energy so it makes the planet a little bit weaker Right. Um, twelfth house can be a lot of things, right? Um, it's very spiritual, um, and you know, like in 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 a chart that does that doesn't use the 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 chart the system like like this. If you would have got this reading like two years ago, I would have used uh, coach. Not it's kind of like Placidus. It's like one like um. And you would have an 11th house sun. 
and I wouldn't be saying all this, right? I'd be talking a lot more about how, you know, your 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 purpose is way more around groups of friends, people, and and um, ambitions, goals, big picture stuff, um, humanitarianism, uh, having lots of like-minded people, which still is in your chart, right? Because your moon is there. So that doesn't go away, but what does change is the fact that 12th house sun, right? It is going to make, you know, zero degrees. It's going to make someone who it's very, very important. God, it's so hot in here. You know, as I said, it, it can be the house of repressed energies. It can be the house um, of everything hidden of the mystic, but also the, the, the self-sabotager, right? Um, you know, usually like lots have like it could it could a lot of times indicate like a father who was not you know not that present or weak and in, weak influence in their life. But like I said, um, it's at you know it's at the very edge and it's it's kind of like uh I think you got a follow up uh, the listener in front of me. I'm pretty sure you did. So make sure um to take notes and um definitely have that be something that we talk about, right? Mika. So, so with with, with um the relationship with, and we'll, we'll go more into in, into that um you know the the zero degree a little bit later, but just know that it's like a raw and filtered. So basically, like when 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 you're young, actually I'll just say about now. So it's like when you're young and you're kind of just like in your I don't know school environment or whatever it is, like your early environment. When you have in your Mercury's there to two in the twelfth house, it's like it can kind of make it so like other stronger energies. Um, and, you know, like these can be this these these energies can can become very strong throughout the lifetime, but um, they're kind of vulnerable at the start. So it can, that's why it can, it can become like the house of repressed energies. And you know, when you have two planets in there, um, you know, it definitely can feel that way um you know your 12th house is ruled by mercury which is in it so that's kind of doubling down on that um you know um and basically the best way when you have when you're like a 12th house person and you know you, you tend to need a lot of alone time even as a gemini um and you tend to be the kind of person that, you know, can, it can be very, it can be very, very, it can really, really benefit you to do lots of um, char- like, like charitable stuff, like com- compassionate charitable stuff. Um, now, it's very, very important. Twelve house people like how, like how they're early, ner- early, early, like. Um, you know, parenting, like the, the nurturing you receive from your parents, um, it's very important how, how that was because um, there can be like lots of like internalization, um, you know, of, of shame and, and other uh, other emotions that aren't necessarily yours, maybe passed on to the family. But um, yeah, like that that's that's something. Um, there's also some level of self-sacrifice that is a lot of times involved in, in, in the in the twelfth house son's lifetime. And um it's it makes someone who, who really has to who who really has to work hard and, and overcome like any like like you know difficulties through their own efforts, right? And um yeah, so so it's very important, like what, what, what like kind of how how you live your life. In twelfth house, at its highest, right? Like like it, it can create this instability, right, in someone's life. Like like uh, I know plenty of twelfth housers, and um, you know, like what I see in this common trend is that they 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 have a, a deep spiritual yearning, but um, in, earlier in life, they a lot of times they get stuck in this like cycle, right? It's like like um. Like and they're just, they just eventually get tired of it, and they know the only um, option is to completely change everything up, right? So, um, you know, a lot of that that comes from okay, how can you have these like quiet moments of, of reflection, of contemplation, 
and heal yourself, heal your emotional pain, right? Um, and what can happen when, 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 you know, everything in astrology has like a low and a, and a, and a high end, um, you know, it's also a very, it's very secretive. The, the energy of the 12th house is very secretive. Um, but what can happen is that, it, especially with Mercury there, I'm trying to get comfortable. Um, it can, it can really open up a lot in the sense of becoming someone who's deeply, deeply spiritual, deeply, deeply tapped into, I'm not still sharing, right? Oh yeah. Um, deeply, deeply tapped into like the collective unconscious. Um, and who's, who's really able to, to understand deeper spiritual concepts that, that might be like baffling to other people. Um, now, Gemini, you know, that, that, that makes one very curious, right? Very curious, very multi-talented. I don't really go into sun signs very much, um, but I do kind of like to compare like, like the, the sun sign with the moon sign. Um, and I would say that, you know, and, and so you have back to back to back for your sun, for, for your sun, moon rising. So you have, you have, because um, the order is Aries, Taurus, you know, Gemini, Cancer, right? And you, you have Aries, Venus. So you have, um, and then, and then even Cancer rising. So you have, um, and then no Leo, but yeah, you have four back-to-back -back signs, uh, energies um, in your in your chart through personal plans. So, you know, that's 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 the beginning of the zodiac. And um, you know, when we speak about the beginning of a, of a new karmic cycle for you, I think of I think this actually adds to that, right? So you're you're gonna see in this reading. I'm put, I'm I'm taking puzzle pieces and finding them and I'm putting them together. I'm getting different clues. So, you know, Aries like like the zodiac, it tells a story, right? And uh, like an archetypal story. I'm not gonna go into it, but basically, like Aries is the, is the first sign. It's just the beginner of everything. And um. You know, and everything in astrology, it's it's act, it's an active sign, then a more a more uh, like a, a ma active, aka like um, masculine sign, then feminine, act masculine, feminine, right? So with your sun, your moon, I find that to be a very nice balance of uh, of the, you know having your moon in Taurus, which is a very very um, it's a good moon sign to have. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's, it's exalted meaning that um, the goals of the moon to be able to kind of express the emotions and and uh, meet your own emotional needs are quite easy quite easy in, in Taurus right like some some people might say it's a good moon sign but I don't use the words good good and bad in astrology because anything can be good or bad like like it's it's not set like that but um what's interesting is is yeah so there's there's one side that's that's, that's very stable very balanced very grounded very very grounded um but then there's another side of you like the sun in gemini opposite uranus that is very very dynamic and that maybe um is resistant very resistant to change or no excuse me no no, no that's why I, I meant to say that that's true there's one side of the taurus side that's very res resistant to change while there's the other side right the more masculine the, the, the gemini side that's very very pro change um in fact very rebellious even right um where it can actually sometimes get you in trouble so i'm very curious in our follow-up like how that um has played out in your life having like you know one side of you that that you know and and maybe like the the taurus side keeps you kind of it keeps you in that state of balance keeps you in that that because i think of like like having earth you know um like you do as being very very good for like being able to be consistent in your life and being able to kind of wake up each day and, and, and not like, like, for example, like, like, like me, like, just like, I can't even schedule readings. You know, I, I can't, I can't have like a schedule of like, I'm going to have like, you know, me and Carlos are going to meet at this time, you know, uh, obviously there's a time difference and stuff, but you know, we're going to meet at this time on Wednesday and that's when we're going to have a reading. I can't do that. And there's, there's other reasons I do, I do these to be recorded. Um, I find them more effective, but um, at least for my style. But like you know, that's that's the point with, with Earth. You're able, you're more able to do that. There's that 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 inner groundness, and 
Taurus moon, there's got to be a, like a real connection to the senses and to the body. And you can learn a lot about your emotions through your connection to your body. So by like, like somatic psychology, by kind of tuning in to meditation or it's yoga or, you know, stuff like that, it's very, very good. And there's an emotional need here for stability. Um, so your life purpose, right? Like, or like, like, like where you're, where, where you're really trying to shine the sun identity you know, is definitely linked to curiosity, to, to trying new things, to, to being open to the unknown and, 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 and yeah, kind of more, more open-minded also to really work the, the work the mind. Um, and then um, kind of contradictory to that is this uh, Taurus moon, which it, 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 on an emotional level, it likes things to kind of stay the same. And it's opposite uh, Jupiter, which, um, you know, that's actually kind of an interesting one. One second. And I have this like, this book I've been using lately just as like, it's a good like keywords. So it's just like more, more of efficient. Um, so weak financial judgment, laziness, difficulty ac ac accomplishing goals. Um, that's like moon and a hard aspect to Jupiter. But, but yeah, really it can, it can make someone who can be a little bit, in your case, with a Taurus, a little bit overly indulgent. And maybe, yeah, potentially um, there, there could be laziness. I'm not saying that's the case. We, we still have to look at the, how, how the rest of the chart kind of plays in. But, um, yeah. But overall, you know, Taurus Moon, you know, they, they definitely, like, um, there's that whole thing, the, the, the heaven on Earth, right? That's, like, what, what the Taurus Moon is trying to achieve um, in their life. They're trying to achieve he fuel heaven on Earth. Um, I always feel like I have to tell people because I drink in a, in a champagne glass every time. I just like the aesthetic of glasses. I'm kind of weird like that. But yeah. Um, so with that said, you know, this can definitely be contradictory, but um, they can also still work with each other because there can be that one side of you that's like always striving for more, that's, that's curious about spirituality. Um, you know, that, 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 that gives, gives himself the, you know, the alone time need to kind of process different things. Um, but then there's, and, and, you know, who's also like social and kind of, um, you know, moving around and, and, and try, trying things out and, 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 uh, all that. And who can get, who can get very, very, very like turned off by like the, the kind of traditional, but there's the other side, which, um, you know, is the opposite, but that, you know, in, in a high energy, the Taurus moon can definitely be like, a, you know, a, a part of you that, 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 that grounds you, right? Because Gemini can be very ungrounded. It's an air sign. It can be very up in the, up, up in the cosmos. So I think this combo, and I've seen this a lot in, in, in different clients, right? To have these two is their, their ascendant. Now, Cancer, that goes way more along your ascendant. That goes a way more along with your Taurus moon. Um, reason being that it's a sex, they're two degrees away. When, when signs are two degrees away, that's a sextile, the elemental sextile. So, um, in that case, you know, you'll come across as very, very laid back. Um, you know, you, I, there could be some shyness, like 12th house people, you know, definitely have some shyness, um, in, with Taurus, um, in Cancer. I mean, definitely some, like a very laid back kind of like, um, nurturing outer personality, right? That's what the ascendant is. It's like the mask you wear, the outer personality, um, which can be good for a whole array of different things, right? Um, so, one sec. I'm going to re-show the chart just, just because what you got to do. Sometimes I've been doing these readings also. I like, I like to kind of like, walk, like uh, go, go, go. I like to kind of like walk around my apartment while I, while while I speak and not always show my face. Not that I care about showing my face, but sometimes like I, I think better when I'm walking. Um, which would be cool if I could like flash this on my TV, but whatever. So, so yeah, basically, um, 
those two together, you know, w- with the fact that Venus is in Aries, um, it makes it makes like the whole everything relate to identity, you know, and, and, and how, how, how does one form the very basis of their identity? Right. Um, like, like how does one undo conditioning from past lives and enter, you know, this new lifetime, you know, with, with an open mind. Right. Um, and you know, that, that's kind of what, what comes to my mind when, when I see all that combination is that, um you know in, in one way you're here to to really like to really really form yourself if that makes sense form yourself in a new way um so what's gonna say about like Gemini in the 12th house i mean it's a very mystical position like it's just a very very mystical position um and um you know, being being of service is super important. You might be someone who like works in like kind of like more hidden like institutions, like you know, um, I don't know, like inside like a stay in asylums or like like um, uh, you know, so, so, something like where, where it's like uh, that was like a really random example, but like you know, like like different institutions that that are more 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 like um, you know, more in the background, less less kind of, like maybe like the less um, maybe a little bit less popular than a lot, a lot of other ones, right? A lot of other like, professions. Like, I mean, I'm not I, like the opposite would be like corporate America type stuff, right? Not that you could that you could work in that, but like, I definitely see, you know, if you have this kind of energy in your chart, you're probably, you know, better off being someone that does spiritual, like some work that can be looked at as like spiritual that can at least help you. Um, understand yourself spiritually at a you know at a better level at a higher level um now one second i'm just making some coffee actually I'm gonna coffee. yeah i'm gonna coffee. um so then when we have let me peer back a little second for a second aspects um you know, sun, 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 trine Mars is wow. You have zero degree Aries too. So you have you have a lot or zero, zero degree Mars in, in in Libra. That's a difficult placement. Um, what 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 aspects does it make? Square Neptune. Okay, damn. Okay. Um, and Venus is opposite Saturn, and opposite Pluto is Z square. Um, no. And where's okay Venus? Um. Okay, so that's more clues. Let me actually like kind of get this all in my head. Okay, and then Mercury is right there because so, okay, so we yeah, the, the Cancer rising it's not that it's not that complicated, right? I'll, I'll show myself for a second before I go make my coffee. Um, yeah, so the Cancer rising it's not it's not it, it just makes you come off like a Cancer, like very nurturing, very like um someone who is very present for. The people around them who um you know is, is able like i said able to have a very nurturing effect um someone who but it's it's on like the cusp of, of leo which i usually don't deal with with cusps when it comes to to ascendance but i mean like that that's like a very powerful cusp for business or like at least when it's sun signs so um you know possibly you, you may kind of um because like in your chart what's missing what elements missing you have water you have earth you have air and you, yeah you have every element so bravo very good um yeah sometimes sometimes like at least for sun signs like if if if, if you if your sun was 28 cancer i'd be talking about like uh how that's a cusp and it's a very powerful cusp so um yeah but i said i've never really observed it so i don't really talk about it but um yeah like basically you know, they're, they're, I still do imagine that 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 28 degree uh, Cancer rising being 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 more uh, a little more dynamic than than it would be if it was like the start of the sign. But I'm gonna look at something real quick. Okay, where'd it go? I'm trying to see if there's any fixed stars. 
Yeah, around 28. Cancer. Mm, no. None that I have in my, that I look at. Um, let's go to Jesse 2. Nope. Okay. So basically, yeah, um, it's it's very complementary of of, of 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 um, you know, of this this process of individualization, right? And because your your son, which is like you know at the at the center of all that, is obviously Uranus, you might be the kind of person that rejects anything traditional. Um. And um, it can if it, it can definitely cause like you know, opposition or ca cause um, conflicts with more traditional people, right? Because you're going to definitely, and it might have to do with your own family as well, maybe even your own father, right? Like uh, there might be like conflict that arises when um, there's a part of you who doesn't want to like live um, your life in like the normal, the normal way, right? And, you know, that it's actually complemented by that very um, Uranus placement, right? Uh, in the sixth house, which, you know, I have that as well. And uh, I, for example, it's three through three. I keep seeing these numbers. Um, you know, you know, like I have a very, like, especially lately, very abnormal um, sleep schedule. Like when I, you know, I'm actually going to hide my clock because it just like annoys me to see. Actually, no, I'm not. Um, but yeah, like basically it can make one a little bit eccentric. Let's just say. Um, so that there's that kind of split, as I would call it, in psychology, where you have like, like two energies or more, two or more energies that are kind of contradictory and that kind of speaks speak to having like not like a dual personality. Like I have a, a massive split in my in my in my chart in, in in my in my in my life. It shows up, right? A lot of people do, <clears throat> and it's very normal. So it's how you deal with the split, you know that that kind of defines you and how, you know, are you able to use one of the energies to pump up the other one? Or are you able to like make, have them form a team? Right. So I was just giving you an idea of how that could be. Right. But like using the Taurus moon is like a, a way to ground yourself, a way to be consistent and then using, and then allowing yourself with the Gemini side to just be different and to just be that creative person, to be that person that just like goes with the flow of life, you know, who just, just, I don't even know how to explain it better. You know, who just, is allowing themselves to, to, to not be weird, you know, but like, look at like Kanye West is, a, is, a, is like an example of a Gemini, right? Like, of course, he's a Gemini Pisces moon. You're a Gemini Taurus moon, so you're going to be a lot more grounded than him, like a million times more. But, you know, like, like kind of taking like, the, like, like um, some, some of like the, the creative, like abstract, like, like sometimes even genius parts of Gemini, right? Um. But then knowing that, like, um, you know, that that, that 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 there is some level of, of groundedness that, that needs to be applied um, in order to have long-term success. Now, when we, uh, yeah, and then when we, when we apply, you know, cancer, that makes your chart ruled by the moon. Um, you know, a chart ruled by the moon is, oopsie daisy. Um, a chart ruled by the moon is a chart that the emotions, right, in Taurus become even stronger and even more important to that individual. Um, so it's very good that you have like such a, such a, a strong moon sign, right? Um, so aside from that, I have to decide which clock I'm going to make. I have so many choices with this Nespresso. It's ridiculous. I'm going to go for some, some strong shit. India is 11 out 13. One second, a little, little, little coffee break. This is a nine. No, I like a ten. Um, twelve is too much. So yeah, like it, it can be difficult um, to have, like you know, a split. But yeah, like what you do with it is really what matters. Um, now, Mercury, you know, is, is, is the plan of communication. It's the plan of, um, of sort of like, like how we speak, like how we speak, how we take information, um, 
And when you have it in the 12th house, it's going to make you like undoubtedly a very, very spiritual person. Someone who may even have the ability to communicate with the other side. It's just about getting past any self-limited beliefs around your own intelligence. Um, because it isn't like um, the strongest energy. Like I said, 12th house energies usually have trouble in youth. Especially like in a man's chart, right? With all the toxic masculinity. Um, and that's that's typically, it's not all the time, obviously. So if you're able to, I guess, um, you know, if you're able to move past that and um, become someone who, second, who, who embraces like the feminine part aspects in yourself, right? And, you know, I, I, I don't like to know a lot about, about like my clients. I, you know, and but like, you know, I, I know you, I've done your, your girlfriend's chart. So obviously like, I know, I, I, I know, you know, that she's obviously a deeply spiritual person. So I kind of have that, like that, not like a cheat code, but like, I, I know something that usually I don't know about clients, you know? Um, but like, I also have this special ability to like forget because I do so many charts that I, you know, I, I actually know I, I do remember her chart shit, but it doesn't matter at all. But basically like, um, Basically, like, you know, they're, they're, like individualization is a huge thing for you. Um, and, yeah, how you handle it is, is, is mega, mega important. Um, like, really, really, like, I can't stress this enough. Like, if it makes sense, you're going to have to let me know. Like, turning a new leaf, right? Because you have two plants at zero degrees, which is, like, this super, super karmic place. Um, it's very, very raw. So there's a very, a very like, like childlike rawness. In lots of areas of your chart, which can sometimes make you make one come off a little bit like um, what's the word, gullible. So you really have to watch out for like um, and and it could be something that you've totally gotten over, right? But um, definitely have, have to watch out for like you know believing everything that you're told, that kind of thing, right? Um, and and especially when it comes to, like spiritual people. But yeah, like. Overall, um, the cheat code for for the the entire chart is through, like you know, finding a, a life a life path where, you know, everything is devoted towards being of service. Everything is devoted towards um. And not everything. It doesn't mean it's like, like if you like you know quit your job and and just like only work in charity and and you know what I mean. Like it's not saying that, but it's more about like how can you give to humanity without expecting anything back in exchange, right? Um, how can you, yeah, just, just giving, giving freely, right? In your everyday life. Come on, Esme. So that is mega important. And, um, you know, speaking a little bit about, about, about love, right? Um, you know, Aries, Mars, Libra, um, that typically Aries, Mars people, they are like the go-getters when it comes to like um, initiating relationships. But this is the thing about your your Venus. Which you're gonna spend quite. A, I mean, at least like it's very very important to talk about your Venus because it's a very particular. It's has very particular aspects that kind of get in the way. So let me explain myself. Venus, the planet of love, the planet of beauty, the planet of everything nice. You know, money, it was money, art. Music, all these, all these Venusian. There's very, there's tons of Venusian. Um, and also, when you listen to this, can you let me know if you're hearing this noise in the background? Because these headphones were designed so that you should be able to hear, hear like that was noise of my coffee machine. Um, but yeah, I said that like in my last recording, and she didn't, say, she hasn't, she hasn't said anything. So who knows? But yeah, like um, when you watch, please like comment on like the YouTube video and just like remind me. I'll forget. And like, tell me like, if you, if you just heard like a, a sh like kind of a, you know, a coffee machine making coffee, like an espresso. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't hear anything. Let's see, I'm just bringing my coffee over here. Um, so you have, so Venus really represents at, 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 at its, at its most true, it represents self-love, right? It represents um, 
like you can only what we value right but but you can only value someone else and you can only really here i come back you can only really like have a relationship that works when you wait where is my thing when you you know when when, when you've gone gone past the own limitations you may have imposed or may have been imposed on you through whatever means okay stop share okay there we are so you have some really difficult aspects of venus and um the most uh difficult one and it, so I want to say, first of all, like on, on a very pot, like very, very, uh, uh, I don't like saying no positive, no negative, but this is definitely positive. You could have someone who like Venus on the midheaven um, could literally be either a career, a career in the arts. Like, I don't know, it's like a musician or a painter and someone, you know, it's in Aries. So it's like there could be like kind of like a very entrepreneurial approach to that. But it's a very, very good placement for career in general, right? Let's just, let's just say that. Now, um, the fact, but there, there's definitely a lot that you have to get past to find. And, it, and, and, and with that aside, it can also just denote like um, beauty and harmony and all these things featuring heavily in your life in your career slash your like overall dharma right like what you're doing on like a big big picture um like like a um uh, large larger perspective like like the, like the big picture in your life right mm. there's nothing better than oat milk oat milk with coffee and a flat white it's just beyond good beyond good um so anyways that's really important. Um, but, but, you know, more than that is that you have Venus opposite. Um, where is it? We're on the chart now. Opposite Saturn and Pluto. And they're both three degrees away. Or actually, no, three degrees for Saturn, five degrees from Pluto. So the Saturn was closer. And um, basically what that means is that your childhood was difficult. There's no, I mean, that's what the astrology is saying, that, you know, there could have been some kind of, some kind of like either trauma, some kind of feeling of, of, of being very restricted, right? And, and, you know, the fact is, is, is Saturn making anything else? Pluto. Yeah, Pluto. Yeah, so, so Saturn is... um. Where is it? Hold up. Okay. So with Mars, it's a square of Neptune. Okay. So, yeah, like definitely like um, childhood. Um, is it linked to the nose? So, so let's see if it's linked to past lives. It is. Wait, hold up. Yeah, it is. So um, there's, there's definitely like, past life difficult karma that you've brought into this life that um showed up has shown up in your um in your childhood right um you know i have it i have the same thing and i always said that the level of trauma that i showed um which i spoke about a little bit in my book i don't know if you ever got the chance to read it or not but it's called pisces live nine lives on amazon and um you know i always said that it didn't equate to like the the trauma that i i was kind of showing and um i i i i i have what you have like um pluto i mean you have saturn square the the, the south node but pluto is also i i use pretty wide orbs for the nodes so pluto is also you know it's it's just outside i mean it's 10 degrees square so to me you know, I'll count that one. And um, yeah, it, it could speak to like some, some past life trauma, feeling very restricted in your self-expression in past lives. Um, and, you know, when we, when we put it together, you know, which this makes perfect sense to do, we're, 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 we're putting the puzzle together, right? Your North Node, which in this life represents um, kind of like 
the mountain never climbed metaphorically in past lives. It represents like where you're really trying to get to on like a spiritual, just on, 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 on a soul level. Right. And everyone has, you know, different North. I mean, not everyone, but like, um, basically like, you know, it's unique to the individual. Right. Um, yours is in cancer. So the South node is the opposite sign of the North node. And it represents an area that's like very easy. The good metaphor is like the South node is like the been there, done that kind of like the layup. While the North node is like the three pointer. It's a lot more difficult. Right. Um, I feel my cat's gonna push over my coffee, but you know, with the North Node in Cancer in the first house, it's it's pretty much telling painting me a, a picture of past lives where you were unable to express yourself. Like, I don't know whether it was like being like a slave or or being like, um you know, in, in some type of, of, of civilization or some type of a societal role where you just like, you know, it could have even been just not even like something so intense, like a slave, like, you know, like something where you just weren't able to really express your, your emotions, right? Um, that feminine side where you were really, really like forced to be the, especially in the seventh house, like South in the, in the Capricorn seventh house, like, where you were really forced to like play the role of the man in relationships, right? Um, and in this slide, you know, because there is an imbalance between the, the feminine and the masculine from that, you're trying to, and don't worry, everyone and everyone has like uh, access imbalance or multiple. But yeah, in this life, you're definitely trying to um, figure out how to balance that out right uh work like like, like kind of like one other thing would be like work like how much you work and how much you like spend you know like like being be, being less like um work or work all the time material world and more like 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 trying to learn how to become vulnerable and express your emotions because the, you know the, this current childhood mixed with um you know past lives um which mim mimic each other in a sense um definitely make it hard for, for that to happen now, there's also a certain level of like healthy selfishness that's needed and creating boundaries. Which being a, a 12th house moon, a sun, excuse me, um, and having Mars and Libra, it might not be your forte. You might have difficulty with, um, with not, you know, people pleasing and um, with, you know, letting people down. Right. But in order to move forward in life, you know, there, there, there's a deep, deep need to kind of like to to let go of, of, of whatever, whatever it is. Right. Especially you see how, how it all comes back. The Taurus moon um, likes to keep things the same. It, it likes to keep, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like an energy of someone who, you know, of course, everything in a chart can't be taken like um, in a vacuum. Like it has to be kind of like compared, like kind of just like, you know, what I mean. Um, compared and talked about with 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 uh, in the context of the chart, but like um, in a vacuum, you know, Taurus, as I said, Taurus Moon, it wants everything to stay the same, and it, it doesn't really necessarily want, um, yeah, it doesn't really want to. Doing this thing. Doesn't it doesn't want to take risks? So in this life, it's like, um, you know, like with with some of its energy, um, with the boundaries. Um, you know, there, there, and, and even the fact that like Jupiter is in Scorpio, right? Um, you're being pushed to take, to take more, more risks, right? Um, more emotional risks, more, more risks that are related to, like, I, I feel like this is the chart of someone who, who's like, like here to break like some like generational trauma, right? Um, like maybe like it's like a, a cycle in your family, like uh, like of the males who can't like really express like you know my family is european like you know we, we have this like like where the males are too proud to like express their emotions and you know i I have an uncle who is a great guy and he he has a cancer and um you know i, I would never say this to him obviously but like 
you know, I'm, I'm positive that, 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 um, you know, obviously we know as spiritual people, that there's a link between cancers and any kind of diseases and energy that resentments and energy that we hold in. And he hates his dad. Right. I mean, he just can't stand him, but he never really tried to have that conversation that, that I know of that. And maybe, maybe he did and just didn't work, but regardless, like, you know, even, even if, even if he did have the conversation, he wasn't able to, to, to still heal. Right. He, he wasn't able to, to still move past it and still. Yeah. So cancer came. Right. And um, it's important, yeah, to 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 understand that because you know th there will be uh, with all this fourth house like craziness. I see that as someone who um, went through a lot, right? And I, I I don't get any. I'm not getting any like indication of like what the relationship between um, you know mother and father is. They're one they're one side of sign away, so it's like you know not really good or bad, I guess you could say. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like neutral. It's, it's difficult to, to say like what, like um, if it was good or bad. But um, definitely there, there, there are some, some, some issues. Um, and it's, it's funny because this would be first, second, like all this would, would be in the third house. No, because it's still the IC, so it definitely it would show up in any kind of like um, class. This any kind of house system. This this would be it. Um, Mars at zero degrees Libra can make you really indecisive. Um, it's really important, like to have like a like a like an artistic outlet. Um, also, I always say with Libra Mars people like 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 it can be the chart of someone who's very wishy washy, um, and who can use like as like a partner, for example, someone who's very like in control in a sense that like someone who's, who's more like type A, um, because you'll be very, very, very dreamy, you know, very stable, but it might be difficult for you to kind of like um, assert yourself, I guess you could say, because the only fire sign you have is, is Venus, which, you know, Venus, Aries, it's not like that's like the most like, it is on the mid heaven, right? So it's like, it is very, very favorable for your career, but it's not like a, having like like a Mars and Aries or something or a Leo rising or a Sat, you know, Aries moon. So um yeah, that 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 that's one part. And then Mars, you know, square Neptune, that can create so I that that's like like you have to stay like really like try to stay away from substances because um there's like the risk of like poisoning or like a, a addiction or you know, anything like that but wait hold up one second a little bit confused right here why is it telling me this okay yeah mars square Ooh, it's not Okay. Ooh. Am I going to count that? It's four degrees away, but it's not inside the sign. It's retrograde Neptune, which means a progression. It went down. Ooh. Let's just say that that, 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 that wishy washy um, potential. Like it's it's very important to 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 find ways to to be assertive and to to find you know um to find what you're to find ways that you can attach yourself to to um I guess value like that to find a, a like a value system right um where you're attaching yourself to to um a list of values that morals and all that that you you base all your decisions off of those right but yeah it's super empath energy um and sometimes mars for nothing can you know it can can make someone like kind of have less faith about them uh, faith in themselves 12th house sun people also you know 12th you know sun and like eighth and water houses they can definitely have self-esteem issues um 
but you know that it is trying Mars or Sun, so that's I mean they're both zero degree planets and air signs. So um, yeah, there can definitely be some issues like in communication. Um, you might be like more of an inward person, I'd imagine, because the other degree is that they can sometimes like be more like kind of like play out a little bit, yeah. Like new energies, like like I think like the zero and twenty nine, I always think of them like they kind of like work like a little bit like retrograde plants a little bit. Um. So yeah, finding finding a partner where it's like safe, um, to kind of express your. You, you, you know, your, all your ideas and, and, and um, someone who, who's not judgmental and who, 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 who you can really, really speak your mind to and uh, learn with and from. Now, you know, with, with uh, Mars here um, in the fourth house, you'll be someone who's very defensive of, of, of your family, whether that's your family of origin or your, you know, your, if you have any kids, them. Um, But yeah, I used to imagine there would have been like tons of like restriction in in your childhood, and also like 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 trauma, traumatic situations that really forced you to grow up fast. Um, and uh, like um, there could be even be some 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 level of like like combativeness, like, ang like anger that you still might hold, resentment that you still might hold from childhood. Now, um. Venus, yeah, Venus and Aries, like kind of just like overall love, love energy. They tend to be like, yeah, the go-getters in love. Uh, it's in the 10th house, so that makes you a go-getter in career, and it actually adds like a lot of luck slash prosperity. Um, FedEx. Like, yeah, in, in whatever you're doing for your career, which is very, very good. So, um, like, you know, your, your, your mid heavens ruled by Mars to agree. So, um, you know, finding something that help that that's either helping you or helping other people achieve balance. Um, even could be business, you know, because, um, uh, Libra is a scales, like commerce, like business, so that's, that's another potential. So, yeah. Um, okay. You don't really have that many difficult aspects. Um, Once again, you know the fact that 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 um, Mercury's where it is in the twelfth house. You know you, you can be able, you, you're someone who 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 once you're able to quiet the mind, meditate, you can literally get information from the gods, from the from the divine, from from the other side. It can just come to you, which is obviously amazing. Um, and you know in in Gemini also it's it it will make you very like one second. For my cats, very intelligent and like in 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 in, in like a very in a kind of like analytical way, like in a way of like um just like yeah, like like how most people see intelligence, um where it's you know you're very 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 capable in, in school and and in 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 any kind of job you have, <clears throat> while also in the twelfth house, I've been you know it's it's Pisces, so it's like it's like being being someone who can um really make it when it comes to to uh like kind of being like a messenger between the spiritual realm right and the world like someone who can take like very advanced mystical statements or not like yeah you know, mystical kind of you know like wisdom that's very hard to put into words but actually put them into words which could be amazing for writing um or you know just just in your everyday life because Myself, you know, for example, I struggle um, even as spiritual and as much wisdom as I might have. Like, I like like when I when I come against someone who's very argumentative against like you know like what I believe in, like I don't really like feel the need to like I don't really like arguing, you know. I'm just like okay, whatever. But like, and and I I I, I don't know. Like sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm bad. But you would be probably a very very good like arguer. Um, and some of you like find the counterpoint here and there. So yeah. Mixing those two. Um but yeah, definitely like huge challenges that have to be ha that have 
have to be overcome in terms of self-love. Um, Venus opposite Saturn can create like lots of, of issues around um, like letting yourself go, um, like in, in the sense of like letting yourself kind of um, express yourself emotionally. Um, and um, yeah, like, 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 like especially in relationships, right? And it can create lots of um, restrictions when it has to do with self-love. And, um, you know, the opposition itself can make someone in turn, because Venus also rules spending, right? So um, Saturn is very conservative. So, you know, it could be some, it can, it can make, um, make one quite conservative in terms of how they spend. <sighs> what else? Um yeah, it's like it can make it really, really difficult, to, like until around like Saturn return, like thirty years old, twenty nine and a half, to kind of have these um, these deeper romantic relationships. Um, it can make someone kind of lack social skills earlier in life and have have uh, troubles with like fitting in. And yeah, they can really like take in a lot of the, of guilt that's not theirs. Um, And like a lot of people that have this, like they they, they tend to they, they can have this like inherent feeling that they're like a bad person and they carry around a lot of shame. And um like it's all about removing guilt and self-pity, like forget forgiving yourself for like whatever it was that happened. Um because sometimes people that have this, it's it's, it's almost like they're wearing like a t-shirt that says like I am worthless, right? But of course, like these are meant to be overcome. Um, so like, yeah, learning to love yourself. So you can use mantras, um, you know, with, with anyone that has 12th house, like you do right in your chart, I always say like film yourself, like, yeah, you, you, you don't have to show anyone, but like film yourself, um, or talk in front of a mirror and just, or like, you know, those are really, really like that was in tuning in 12th house things that can really, really, um, help. And, um, yeah, there can be definitely depression that comes from from this, and um, yeah, like like in terms of work, there can be like um, this is opposite of the midheaven, like like work, like everything related to your career probably took off, took off like a lot more after thirty because there could have been like lots of setbacks. And um, yeah, like Saturn gets every like it gets everything gets better with age. So like with um, age comes like a great deal of, in terms of relationships, like commitment, satisfaction, um, and yeah, people really appreciating you for for all the hard work you put in. Um, yeah, and. Um, it comes from like like I was saying before, like early conditioning that led you to believe that you were not good and deserved to be sad and lonely, right? And there's usually karmic reasons related to it. So, um, like like an inferiority complex. Um, and yeah, like some people that have this, they just spend their whole life blaming and and not take like 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 not like because like as a spiritual person like you know everything is karma right but a lot of people they'll just spend their whole lives like like with like the, the kind of difficult uh, aspects aspects like this just blaming that that person for for the fact that they're not you know doing well or something like oh like, i'm just like i'm fucked up because of my you know my dad or my mom and, and they don't take like the karmic responsibility of probably you know in some sense it's uh you know that they were that way to them in a past life and then in the next life it's just like this, this trading off and it's all about stopping that cycle so the you know the the the, the pluto one so this has like big um in love it kind of creates like this this um like lots of very very intense karmic instant attractions but um it makes you love really really intensely and um once again you know, it all boils down to how much you love. Sometimes people that have these these aspects can like, um, it can almost be like how relationships are like the the, the like the thing that saves everything in life. You know, it makes everything better. And um, 
there can be, you know, so there's a need to really value yourself, but, um, value your mission, and then things become a lot easier. Um, and uh, there can be, like, yeah, like, like kind of like jealousy, possessiveness, all these kind of lower Scorpio energies, uh, like, like things that are associated with Scorpio can come out in relationships. But it's through these relations, these, these like these, these, you know, these these romantic relationships typically, where you actually see your own shadow and you're able to actually do the the shadow work and, and really heal parts of yourself, right? So that's kind of like that. Um, and then Venus trying Neptune. I mean, that's a beautiful one. Like, let's see, it's like very good for imagination and artistic, like uh, heightened creativity, interest in mysticism, powerful aspect artistic potential but um a need for firm direction in life which definitely like with the 12th house that you have like sun in the 12th house like there can be this this kind of like um like one self like self-deprecation like like but also like uh like kind of losing yourself sometimes right it can definitely happen where you kind of like lose your tracking lose where your, your your momentum in life but it all comes back to that first house um north node which is about you know letting go of being like that person that relies too much on relationships um that person who at the same time relies too much on on kind of like materiality i guess you could say like like whatever it is that like like taking success from external and who instead says you know what? i'm gonna i'm gonna experience lots of i'm gonna be very independent in this lifetime I'm going to experience a lot. And, um, and, uh, also I'm like, like, like pushing yourself to get more in touch with your emotions and to, to, to get past all these limitations I'm talking about with the, these oppositions, right. Um, with Venus and, and, and Pluto and Saturn and, um, being able to be vulnerable enough to express kind of how you feel. And, and uh, it comes from having a partner that's very, very psychologically intelligent um and who's very very patient and who you know loves you and who um yeah who's there for you in those moments right because um so much growth can come from just starting to talk about stuff that maybe you didn't really talk about before okay but then um so then venus um or Mars has a little a sextile with Uranus. It's a pretty close one too. So that one would it says um, practical, intellectual, energetic, resourceful ability to make quick decisions. So I I like that because it gives you like this this sense of like being just kind of um, like unique in the sense that you're really able to be your own person. Um, and you know there would be like an aspect pattern that. Um, will be formed, I don't know the name of it, between um, Mars, Uranus, and the Sun. A trine, an opposition, and a sextile. The kite. But, yeah, anyways. Um, so, So yeah, that's that's a lot like a very difficult fourth house. So the fourth house is in Libra though. So the IC is in Libra. So um you know, typically like what I would think about that is that you you do really want to have find like a, a balance. Um and like you, like I say you have to watch out for the people pleasing because like there can be like this tense like maybe um in your early childhood like you were the one who's always like like the 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 the, the person that people came to to kind of like um, balance everything out and to make sure that everything was okay and like kind of like almost like the counselor. Um, and you prefer, a, you know, you, you really strive for like a peaceful home environment. Um, and yeah, like you definitely be, like can become like the peacemaker in your family, but you can maybe come from a very explosive family. So, yeah. Um, Jupiter and Scorpio, that's like, like in the fifth house, um very very creative placement someone who um 
expands themselves through their own ability to like be in touch with their inner child, their own like authenticity, but also like you know, Scorp like Jupiter in Scorpio is um, that's like the like like one indication of someone who could be like a very good psychologist, someone who like really sees through the undercurrents and um, who has like a heightened intuition and an ability to 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 really 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 um, see through the the bullshit in everyday life, you know, whether it's in relationships and, uh, you know, you'll expand a lot through anything related to Scorpio. So that's like, you know, death, rebirth, transformations. Um, and, you know, Jupiter also is rep representing like this, this, this search for truth. So yours will be one of in intense spiritual depth. Um, and, um, you know, like very like, uh, like maybe interested in the esoteric and anything hidden right and you know there can also be like something like like it can be very very like um on a, on a romantic basis like really looking for that soulmate type of love which you know when we talk more about about the love you know mars and libra also is someone who's looking for really really looking for for, for, for um achieving balance in relationships right they're looking to really really achieve um like a level of balance and a level of like harmony um in their adult relationships but square neptune it can kind of make it so there can be some confusion around like um sometimes like what like what is really really um happening right and um it's important for them and, and it can also kind of sometimes cloud their judgment in terms of their actions so they can sometimes do things that they don't they're like why the fuck did i just do that you know um so I, at a high on a higher like one like once like and, and self-sabotage it wants to go it definitely goes with the self-sabotage self self-sabotage themes but at a higher degree just like your 12th house um it has to do with being able to to channel this into something either something creative or something highly spiritual one or the other and um yeah so so i talked about, about this like to have all three malefics all in the fourth house is just like guaranteed that like saturn is, would be like you know you had like like a a, a a early childhood environment that you know there is definitely like maybe maybe violence or maybe like at least like 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 arguing and that kind of like like kind of battle energy saturn would speak about how they're you know like probably not that much like like kind of like a level of coldness and um maybe maybe like lack lack of warmth that you may have received from from potentially the father um could be both parents who knows but although your moon your moon does have a triumph in the south node, so maybe the, the mother um there's you know maybe maybe it's not like that with the mother, but um it's tough to tell. We'll have to talk about that in the follow up. But then um yeah, Pluto so so yeah, the Saturn is like yeah, the restriction, coldness, and then the Pluto is is just about like just like like usually trauma of some sort, you know, and trauma is very subjective. So so one person Two people can have the same childhood and one person can really like feel it um, as traumatic while the other person doesn't, right? Um, but like a very volcanic early home environment and um, where, 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 where um, traumas are, are, are kind of seeding beneath the surface, right? And the fact that it's opposite your, your, your Pluto, um, and I have this too, so and I, uh, it's like basically like until you go into those and, and really, really, really like, like, try to heal them it has an effect on how far you can go in terms of, of your career like how 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 deep you can really really take it so when i learned about that recently i i just like i honestly like like um i i went through very 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 healing time and speaking of healing chiron it's in taurus in 11th house so um you know chiron in the house, it means that, you know, you could be the someone who is meant to, who, who might have some type of pain when it comes to friends, uh, groups of people, um, 
in Taurus, though, it can feel some pain related to the body, the physical body. Um, also, like, set of values, like, you know, um, a crisis of values, you could say. Like, a, um, self-worth issues, right? Um, so, like, yoga is really, really, I always, for all my Chiron and Taurus, like, a lot of them always say, like, yoga is, or something, something like, like, similar like that, meditation, mindfulness, like, getting in touch with your body is super important. Um, let's see. Also, like, like learning to love your body, you know, like, so people Chiron and Taurus can, can kind of, like, not love their body, not love their appearance, um, but yeah, like in the 11th house, it's yeah, it's not it's not making any aspects. I mean, it's loosely connected to the sun, but it's still, I mean, it's 70 degrees from the sun, which are in different signs. That's kind of like, meh. but you know, usually, like what that would mean would be that, like, you might be meant to be a healer of some sort, you know. And in the 11th house, like, yeah, it, it, talk about, it can take, talk about how pain is experienced in groups. And, um, like, you could, be, you could be part of, like, a, a group, um, which talked to me about something related to that in, in our, our follow-up. Remind me of the code word I told you about. Um, yeah, like, how you can, how you might, like, like really enjoy being um, in groups of other people who are like like healers as well and um kind of heal with them so all right um more with the love stuff you know descendant is in capricorn with your south node with juno so you're you're definitely gonna gonna like someone who you can really be proud of like what they're what they're accomplishing who is very consistent um one second let's share this again Maybe look a little walk around, the ideas come better. Um, yeah, but someone who's very consistent and who just like that you can really, really be proud of, right? And it's in the seventh house, so it's like so it's like 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 where there's a level of commitment, right? From both parties, that's like like undoubted. You know, there's there's no doubt in the level of commitment. Um so that's really important, and that's gonna really like make you, yeah, more like that. That's gonna that like your ideal like um, Juno represents your ideal partner, right? So, um, in Capricorn seventh house, like like it kind of goes back to your Mars and Libra, which is like where you're really really wanting. You don't like fights. You don't like you don't like these like these um like some people thrive on drama. You know, like they they love it, right? But because you're so sensitive. It affects you a lot. So, um, like, while some people, like, might, you know, the whole toxic, like, euphoria, I don't know why I brought that up, but, like, like, um, that just came to my head of, like, like that, the, what, what's your name? I forget. Maddie, whatever, I don't know if you've seen that show. Really, really, really amazing show, by the way. I must say, I don't watch that many shows, and that show is really 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 well made really amazing um but um yeah so like some people love drama like they say they don't but they fucking love it they thrive on it it makes them feel alive and that's just the way it is it's kind of fucked up but you know it's the world we live in you are not one of these people you are someone who way 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 would rather have a relationship where things are smooth you know you have this like solid foundation like think of a building like a skyscraper right where you're really setting up like the foundation the foundation when you build like a big building of any sort you know i'm sure you've, you've, you've seen you've, you've seen that process the foundation is what takes the longest right um once the foundation is, is ready, like everything's built on the foundation. So that is, you know, of mega, mega importance to you is to have these really, really 
um, strong foundations in your relationships. Um, and um, when you have those, what, what happens is that you never really have to, to kind of, I guess, doubt like, like, like uh, your partner. Um, you never have to really even like think, like think twice. Like, you know, um, for a fact that everything is good. And, um, you know, that, that even if you haven't heard from them, like, for example, like if you haven't heard from them, heard from them for a few hours, like as long as they're safe, like, you know, like that, that's what, like, you know, you, you, know, you know, you can rely on them on that deep level. And that is extremely important. Um, also more with like, you know, Mars being a Libra, um, you know, Mars and air sign people, they, they like to be able to be like, kind of like BFFs, like very, like, it's a bad word. Like just like really really close friends with their their partners, you know, um, and that you know like where they can like have this like very intellectual connection with them, right? Where where they, like they they're um, kind of on the same page with a lot of stuff. Now aside from that, um, I see that you have. Let me go back to the computer. <sighs> yeah, this new walking thing it really does. Oh, really like it brings a lot like I always felt like I had this like this need to kind of like always show my face the entire reading but like no like I like to walk around like I have my best ideas when I'm walking and so much comes to me when I'm walking um so that's kind of that um and you, you know your 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 partners will be very very karmic um so that that's that's that for sure but um yeah so moving forward um and like I, I see so much creativity in your chart by the way so much creativity and also an ability to assert that creativity um when your life is in that right direction because you know your life can like like it, 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 i do believe like like just knowing you know your girlfriend and, and having done her chart that like you probably have gone that direction gone the right direction but this is the kind of chart of someone who like where it can be difficult right um until they decide to kind of let go as a male in today's world and go towards authenticity and i'm wondering if there's ever a time in your life where you're like kind of not really really going with the authentic with the authentic um with your authentic nature and how the suffering was for that but anyways um okay moving on um so, you know, you have your sixth house um, with all the Sag outer planets. So, first of all, you know, Plasma, Lilith, and Sag, that's kind of an obvious one for me. It's like basically like being, it's not an actual planet. It's kind of like where you where you go to when you're at your lowest. Let's just say, let's call it that, right? It's like, it's like and in Sag, it has a lot to do with, um, you know, my way or... Like, like, like what I believe in, like kind of like what I believe in, everyone has to believe in, right? And, and kind of being a little bit dogmatic when it, when it comes to, to, to pushing your philosophies on other people. And, and it, it's very important to overcome that by understanding that, you know, everyone um, has their own way of, and timing for, for understanding deep truths, right? Um, and the fact that it's conjunct Neptune is, is furthering that. And it's relating, it's, it's relating that, well, first of all, that's major, I don't want to say witch energy, but just like mystical, mystic energy, right? That's really, really, really nice. Um, but also it's 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 saying that like, you know, that that what I just said before, um, it relates to like your your spirituality, right? And 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 what you learn uh in relation to to um you know mysticism and and uh and and stuff like that. Like like um you'll you'll really want you kind of you kind of have to watch out for also like like you know conjunct Neptune for being a little bit um in twelfth house a little bit over idealistic and a little bit too too in the dreams not enough in the reality right that can be an issue. Um, but yeah, like having Neptune and Uranus in the sixth house that creates someone who is like Uranus in the sixth house unusual like probably an unusual routine probably and, and with the fact that you know you have your midheaven in aries with aries and uh you know 
Venus conjunct it, you're, you're probably be way more entrepreneurial, way more like someone who like kind of likes to have their own power and their own like agency when it comes to their work. Um, and yeah, like, like maybe unusual habits. Like I have this placement and it's, yeah, it's 4 26 AM. I'm doing this reading and this is my first reading. I'll may I'll probably, I don't know if I'll do one or two a night, but a good chance I do another one after this. Who knows? Um, and then Neptune, yeah, it kind of, it, it kind of makes it so like there's, there's, there, there can be like a sense of loss, a sense of like, um, vagueness, I guess, um, real difficulty to kind of like, um, cope with your like everyday life. So like having like a nine to five boring and un unmotivating can be very difficult for, for someone that has these plans here, like myself and you. Um, also it can create like really weird random health problems. Like I, I used to have this thing with my eyes. I said this last night where I would just like, like this, like when I was like, like I had like a tick where I was just like, I was just, like do that a lot. Like and it happened for like a year or two. And then it just like stopped happening. Like I never went to a doctor for it. Just like stopped happening. Right. So yeah, but I'm not a medical astrologer. Vertex, you know, in stats is fixed. I mean, your doorway to higher awareness is through being of service. Um, and in relationships, you will, you know, like vertex is also kind of like the, the secondary ascendant, the ascendant that you have when in relationship. So in, in Sag, it's like someone who who comes across as being very philosophical, um, who comes across as very adventurous to their partners. And, you know, the fact that it's conjunct uh, Uranus means like in your relationships, you, know, you really, really want to to do different things, you know, to even though even though you do have this introverted side, you 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 know you you do definitely want to um to kind of explore that the more unusual areas of life, let's just say. And um like explore your own individuality together. Um uh, okay, said this, said that, said this, said that. Said this, said that. Okay, so I said it all, but let's just. Uh, so I looked for the fixed stars before, but I didn't really see anything. But let's just like open up this other list. Um, and let's go. So twenty-eight. Let's start at at nineteen and nine. Nope, nothing in Aries. Nothing in Taurus. Zero, fifteen, and twenty-eight. Oh shit! So your sun is conjunct Alcyon. So Alcyon is the grand central sun. It's a massive, massive one, right? Um, according to Vedic, like like Vedic astrology. <clears throat> And this is like I don't really want to go all the way this, but we're on we we go through twenty a uh, twenty four thousand year cycle. I'm sure you've heard like the Bronze Age, Iron Age, Bronze Age, Silver Age, Gold Age, and all of that is based around our little solar system getting closer to Alcyon. So it's like the Grand Central Sun. So, um. And yes, yeah, it's 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 in the Pleiades, right? So so you can, so you might have like a, a connection to like the Pleiadian, like like you might be like a Pleiadian or have like a connection to that. Um. So. Let's see. Let's 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 dig into this, right? So. Mm, optimistic, peaceful. Ambitious, but also turbulent. Moon and Mars. Okay. You have to watch out for issues with your eyes. Danger to your eyes. So let's see what they say. Um, watch out for, for issues with your throat. Um, like I already said, the eyes. 
Um, okay. This is weird. Uh, I don't feel like this information is. So yeah, I guess Alcyon overall is um it can be fortunate. But um with the sun it's not it's not it's not gonna really like um have the best parts of it, right? Um it can, it can kind of like create someone who's who's a little bit ruthless. Um, yeah, I keep saying that the eyes. Okay. Also, okay, so it's a, it, it's really really good for making like excellent counselors in, in like in, in difficult time um, with a special gift for um, for bringing out the brightest spiritual significance of death, which is like twelfth house, you know. Is, is, it can be related to like these, these transitions um so yeah you can be like the kind of counts like it can make someone the kind of counselor or the kind of person who can like really help people through like these very very tough spiritual times all right um then 28 cancer and zero aries Nope. Not Aries, you know, kind of zero Libra, opposite Aries. And then what about your 16, Saturn, 24? Nope, 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 nope. Oh, speak a conjunct Pluto. I wonder if there's anything on speak a conjunct Pluto. Speak as a very, very, very amazing star, but you know, to have Pluto conjuncted. Um, there's no information on that, fortunately. Um, okay, so Jupiter at two Scorpio. I don't see anything about that. Um, two. So uh, Uranus at two. Sad. Let's see if there's anything here. Nope. Just scuba. Okay, here you go. So you have uh, de fixed star Deshuba conjunct Uranus. It says shrewd, cunning, excellent linguist. Um, there can be troubles through the opposite sex. Um, strange adventures abroad. And um, watch out, like this represents poor circulation in the hip area. Um, it can be relieved by drinking small amounts of ginger root, like a, only a pinch of ginger in a large cup of hot tea twice per week. And uh, it says it should be taken in quite small amounts, kind of random. Um, so 26 with Neptune. Then <laughs> twenty eight, 
28 cap 18 A's. No. No. And no, 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 no. So that's it. I hope you enjoy. Let's see how I did time wise. Please stay close to an hour. An hour thirty as usual. Literally like uh, one hour thirty minutes in zero seconds is what I or one second is what I stopped it at. It's so ironic because I keep like being like I want to get them closer to an hour, but then I just like you know I I can't rush the reading. Um, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll 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 be better at that. But I hope you enjoy and um. I'm like 95% sure that you got the follow up also. So, yeah, reach out to me. Most people like, you know, um, kind of watch the first time. They kind of just like take their time with it and all that. And then, um, like, yeah, they, they after that, take, like, sec- they'll watch it a few times, maybe the second time, take notes and uh, eventually reach out and do the follow up. So, yeah, look forward to that. Um, and thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Ciao.